الحمد للہ شد اللہ اللہ شریک اللہ I bear witness there is no other God besides God and He is the partner. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Mashallah. Uh, so, I'm starting. So, let me give the charity announcement, inshallah. Uh, we have a charity plan for preparing sandwiches for the homeless, inshallah, on Sunday, 2 p.m. So, whoever can participate, please participate. Okay. Let's go to the juice. Okay, since all are talking about it, let me talk about it. Let's meet in the Discord after the sermon. Okay, so this is not the main topic, but I wanted to put this. Okay, yeah. So we all know that uh, Quran is the word of God, and um, I'm going to go back talking about this and what happened to the Quran and what we have right now is, is Quran in our hand, inshallah. And then um, we all know, everyone knows that Quran is the word of God, which came out of the Prophet more, Prophet's mouth. And then this is on May 18, 1985. The main topic of this sermon is on this part, tampering uh, with the word of God and how these two false verses came into and how it was removed out of the Quran and what we are going to do uh, having the pure Quran, inshallah. So 15.9 talks about, 15 and absolutely we have revealed the reminder and absolutely we will preserve it. And 69.38, it says, I swear by what you see and what you do not see. This is the utterance of an honorable messenger. That's about the Quran. And talks about the Quran in greatness of the Quran, 59.21. If we reveal this Quran to a mountain, you would see it crumbling, crumbling out of reverence for God. We cite these examples for the people that they may reflect. And Quran also wants people who... Uh, disregard the, the message from God. It says 21.24 to 1.27 As for the one who disregards my message, he will have a miserable life and we resurrect him on the day of resurrection blind. He will say, my Lord, why did you summon me blind when I used to be a seer? He will say, because you forgot our revelations when they came to you, you are now forgotten. We thus require those who transgress and refuse to believe in the revelations of the Lord the attribution in the hereafter is far worse and everlasting. Now we know Quran is preserved by God and um, it's, a, it's an utterance of an honorable messenger and how great is Quran. And then Quran says that what happens to persons, uh, people are, who disbelieve or disregard the message, they will have miserable life. And then Quran, God knows the future. So God knows what what these Arabs or the disbelievers are going to do with the Quran after the revelation. So God put these verses there, 25.4 through 25.6. I'm going to read 25.6. It says, say, this was revealed by the one who knows the secret, secret in the heavens and the earth. He is forgiving, most merciful. The footnote says, the Quran's miraculous mathematical code, the incontrovertible answer to the disbelievers' claims, remained a divinely guarded secret for 1,400 years. God's messenger of the covenant was destined to unveil it by God's belief, right? There was a secret hidden, but no one, knows, no one knew about it at that time. And then it is also, uh, chapter 10, verse 20, is talking about the secret to be revealed in the future, which is miracle of the Quran to be unveiled after Muhammad, 1020. They say, how come no miracle came down to him from his Lord? Say, the future belongs to God, so wait, and I'm waiting along with you. And this miracle is designed for the computer age and to be appreciated by mathematically challenged people like me. Oh, sorry, mathematically sophisticated generation. <laughs> and then what happened, and the, uh, the, the messenger explains that the people, the people started to love Prophet too much. And then um, what, what the messenger says is that the love, too much of love, 
went into the opposite direction that they disregarded the verses of the Quran and they started to love the messenger uh, the prophet and uh, they started to uh, their, their love uh, turned into a hatred toward other things other than the prophet so for this is the same example for jesus in 5116 it says god will say oh jesus son of mary did you say to the people make me and my mother idols beside god he will say be glorified i could not utter what was not right had i said it you already would have known it you know my thoughts and i do not know your thoughts you know all the secrets and uh, 5117 says i told them only what you commanded me to say that you shall worship god my lord and your lord i was a witness among them for as long as i lived with them when you terminated my life on earth you became the watcher over them you witness all things the same thing applies to prophet muhammad here it's text 22 chapter 2 verse 285 here when we say we make no distinction among any of his messengers and we say we hear we obey everything they say in arabic but they don't understand that um, how much they how much they idolize uh, uh, the prophet they bring they make uh, in their shahada in their every single worship practices they bring that oh muhammad said this muhammad said that and um, if you go to a friday prayer um, in a in a mosque in from sunni muslim background i'm saying if you go to a friday prayer in a mosque you will see all the stories towards that mohammed walked in and somebody threw something on him and then he said this and he said that they will the 60 to 9 clearly says that god you you go to friday prayer to commemorate god and you come out talking about all this uh, Uh, stories that he uh, Muhammad did that, Muhammad did that, and then his companions did this. All these kind of stories, instead of commemorating God, they will commemorate mostly on the on the individual. So that love to the Lord, the Prophet, made them to make a decision that uh, when the Quran was compiled, they started to act towards it. So that is when the tampering of uh, tampering the word of God happened. So the sequence is Quran was written down immediately after revelation. So whenever the revelation came, Prophet Muhammad wrote it down, um, and then whoever were next to him started to write it down. Muhammad had the uh, the Quran as per chronological sequence, like 96 was the first revelation, and then last revelation was I think 100 and something. But based on that, it it uh, he wrote it down and uh, chronological, not the sequence like chapter one to 114, um, and then. after he 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 went back to god then abu bakr umar abu bakr and umar i hope after unanimous consensus appointed zain ibn tabith to collect and document quran right and then they came up with a criteria that every single verse of the quran had to be confirmed by minimum of two witnesses so if there is no two witness they don't take that uh, as a as a verse to be added in quran and then what happened this is the sequence umar uh, what happened in that three time is that umar had one verse right the quran compilation committee member a most respected person umar brought a verse and then that was rejected because it didn't pass the minimum two witness criteria even though he was a committee member it didn't pass but the uh, 9128 and 129 were added in spite of failing the two witness criteria somebody i think questioned that maybe they had a sunday quran study or something why did you rejected this uh, verse when umar was bringing in he is a friend is relative is a trustworthy he is a second khalifa but you accepted from somebody who is uh, uh, khuzaima who came with only one one witness he was the only one who had who had that two verses Uh, with him, and then he said that this, this, this is the verse which uh, Prophet Muhammad told to me. And then people were like started to answer that question, and then they said that Khuzaima's uh, witness, uh, I mean, his, his when he comes with something, then his one witness is equal to uh, two witness. And the question is, what happens to the other person? What is his testimony, right? I have a story like. Um, somebody went to a interview and then the interview the, was was going on and he gave a recommendation letter and then that recommendation letter the 
So I opened the recommendation. It was from a prison guard. <laughs> the prison guard gave a recommendation to this guy, saying he is good guy, right? And then he was asking, "Oh, okay, everything is okay. He may know why you went for the prison." And he said that it was just a simple, a simple murder. Murder? Oh, okay. Why? Why did you murder? I know, you know, people get into fight. You know. No, I went for an interview. That guy didn't give me a job. So, <laughs> and then this guy was asking his boss, "You have any other questions?" Oh, when are you joining? <laughs> so like that, this person who's giving a testimony that Huzema is equal, his testimony is equal to two. Now I would repeat it. <laughs> So the recommendation is given by uh, somebody, and what what is his credibility, right? This guy is giving that this Kusima's uh, that whatever person's uh, testimony is equal to two, but what is his uh, credibility, right? We don't know what is his credibility. Somebody comes and says that oh he is uh, equal to two persons. So like that, the tampering started, and the tampering was uh, was the two verses were uh, injected into. Uh, uh, the Quran. This is how um, there is a there is a method of naming the uh, chapters in Quran, right? Uh, Prophet Muhammad was 13 uh, lived th after his prophethood. Uh, he got fought, uh, in 40. He got his prophethood, and then 13 years he lived in Mecca, and 10 years he lived in uh, Medina. So whatever verses. He was revealed at this time. They were titled as Mecca uh, chapters, Meccan, and then whatever revealed on that side it was a Medina chapters. So Meccan chapters is roughly 86, and then Medina chapters are uh, 28. And this chapter nine was revealed in the in the end of uh, during maybe. 12 years later after the Hijri or something, or, or nine or uh, eight years later. But technically, chapter nine was revealed in Medina. That's why they are Medina chapters. Now, why that is important, right? Mecca and Medina chapters, why it is important is the labeling, um, 9, 128, and 129 were lab labeled as Meccan verses, which means in a chapter, when it is revealed, if you are in Mecca, if it's revealed in Mecca, the chapter is known as Mecca uh, verses. If it is, and then if it is, re if the prophet is there in Medina, and then if it is revealed there, the chapter was called as Medina uh, chapters. The chapters, I'm saying chapters, not the verses, I'm saying the chapters, right? And the first red flag is, you can, this is a sequence, right? The 13 years, and 10 years is a sequence. It, it cannot, it cannot, he was not traveling here and there. So after 13 years, he went there. He stayed there most of the time, except one or two, one Hajj, I, I believe. He came back. But he stayed there. He, he, he was there, and he died there in Medina. And then this 9, 128, 129, these two verses were called as Mecca verses. In Medina chapter, there cannot be Mecca verses. But in Mecca, there can be Medina verses. Because in, in um, assuming there is uh, chapter 96, if you take chapter 96, only four verses came out, and the rest of the five verses came out here, but it still be termed as Mecca uh, chapters. So when it came in Medina, and then cannot, there cannot be a sequence which says that Gabriel comes and tells you, like, two verses I'm giving you here, but that will go and add it here. So that's not, that's not logical. And then this was always a question for people. Uh, these two uh, verses, 9, 128, and 129, was always a question for the people. Um, there is a, there is, there is a uh, like for example, if, you, if I want to give an example, like somebody was asking this guy, uh, where were you born, right? And then this guy says, uh, India. And they say, which part of India? What, which part? All part of from India. So, any time you cannot go with words, uh, just two words, and put it in, in under Mecca. You have to call it the Medina verses. Every time it's, uh, it's always the Medina verses. And then there is another red flag: is 
God made that these people are going to do this um, tampering. So he didn't uh, put that holy name, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in chapter 9. And uh, another example with the messenger says is that about uh, this chapter, chapter 9, uh, having 128 and 129, is if you go uh, to a uh, to archaeological store, and then you buy a coin with uh, with BC engraved on it, right? There could not be anything with BC engraved on it. You have been duped out of that because BC came in after uh, after Jesus um, after Jesus uh, born, and then after the the historical uh, people decided that we have to divide like this. So a coin with BC means that you bought some crypto coin which is not valid. And all throughout the, the Quran, we have seen this, uh, um, this sign that Quran is, 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 is filled with all this proof. Um, chapter 10, 1, Alif, Lam, LR, these letters are proofs of this book of wisdom. 12, 1, and then 15, 1, 26, 2, these letters constitute proofs of this clarifying scripture. 28, 2, these letters constitute proofs of this profound book. 31 2, these letters constitute proofs of this book of wisdom. But no one were, were able to understand what exactly this is talking about, right? And then that's when the first profound miracle is, is coming out. So what we see, we, we all go from 1990 or 1986, 85, but the real miracle, uh, the, the background, the work all started. What we have right now is, is out of 20 years of hard work from uh, from Dr. Khalifa. So 1968, Dr. Khalifa wrote the whole Quran in the, in, in the computer, right? And then in 1972, he publishes a book, uh, which is Miracle of Quran, Significance of the Mysterious Alphabet. So what he thought was this Ali Islam meme or, or noon, all these things, in each chapter is coming up um, uh, more times in that chapter. So that is how he thought, he didn't know that there is something uh, in there. But that book published, um, um, that book published, all the 19, everything was, was there, but no one was able to understand the, uh, the, the pattern. There, there may, his main focus was on how the mysterious alphabets are, are being um, entered in the Quran, and then the output, how it is showing. And then, this is where it's very important part uh, we have to understand. Because we, only then we can appreciate what we have. It says, he says, the divine manipulation of a computer produces correct results regardless of human error. The letter noon was fed into the computer, if you count as it is, was 132. But the computer calculated it as 133. Right? And then this book was published. So all the traditional Muslims know uh, how to write the noon, right? And then they know that the way noon is calculated is one more than what uh, it has. So they, they send all the feedback, which had that take that the noon is only 132. The, 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 the one you publish is having 133, which is wrong. Then he went back, he checked, he went back to the oldest Quran, and then he checked, and then he found the right spelling of the Quran. Uh, noon was the way it has to be spelled. The, even the actual entry, he saw that even the actual entry was 132, but the computer calculated it as 133. God manipulated the computer data to inform the world about the correct data. This is what the messenger says. And then this is not the first incident. Then the second incident happens in 1981-82, they, he published two more books. One is the computer speak, God's message to the world, and the Quran, the visual presentation of the miracle. And he entered the data, right? The computer should, based on the data enter, the computer should provide the result of Allah as 2699, right? But it gave the correct Allah, 2698. Okay. Yeah, give me, yeah, I'm in this And then the, the computer gave the correct number 2698, which is a multiple of 19. Why was, because that data he entered had 9129. It has one Allah there. It counted that one Allah. In 915, if you see this, there are two God there, right? 
the, the computer didn't pick the one dot. Even if you go pick up that book, the visual presentation, you will not find this one, uh, only one Allah for 915. And you will find 9129 also there in the list. Which means the, the whole concept of garbage in garbage out is not working out there. So God brought the right number out there, even though we had the uh, wrong entered value. The computer would have reported 132 uh, during 1972. The messenger said he would have dropped the analysis and then uh, he would have stopped this uh, research on, on the miracle. But um, God blessed us with this miracle. And so what we can say is that SubhanAllah and uh, let's repent SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, Shadda la ilaha illallah, Wadu la sharika lahu. Okay. Again, reminding charity. Any other reminders? Hope not. And now, okay. Now I have this, the, how the uh, Quran was tampered, and then now we know um, the miracle uh, came out of the Quran, and then it purified the message, and what we have now is a purified Quran. A purified Quran is um, God's scripture, it says the Quran is greater than all prophets combined. That is why God's scripture is consistently mentioned ahead of the prophets. 2.177. It says righteousness is uh, righteousness defined. Righteousness is not turning your faces towards the east or the west. Righteous are those who believe in God, the last day, the angels, the scripture, and the prophets. And then 2.285, in the end it says it's they believe in God, his angels, his scripture, and his messengers. And on 4.136, it says, anyone refuses to believe in God, his angels, and his scriptures, and his messengers, and the last day has indeed strayed far as prey. And then, number 1985, this is the article over there, it says, the Quran, being the word of God, enjoys the exclusive descriptions as a theme, which is 1587. We have given you the seven pairs and the great Quran. 5677 says this is an honorable Quran. And 4141 and uh, 51 it says few and the glorious Quran. These are the names of God Himself and the word of God represents Him to us. No prophet has ever been described in these terms. And then Quran speaks, right? Um, I come to you from Him as a warner as well as a bearer of good news. Um, and then Quran is also a messenger. In 65.1, says a messenger recites to you God's revelation clearly to lead those who believe and work righteousness out of the darkness into the light. And Quran is the Imam, and it says, uh, um, as for those who were given solid proof from the Lord, reported by witness from him, and before it, the book of Moses, etc., resident. Here, Imam is different ways here, uh, the messenger has, uh, has translated. And then this is what is it? Prophets die, or prophets cannot die, right? 39.30, you, Muhammad, will surely die just like they will die. That's why we see the whole Quran, uh, the messenger's duty is to deliver the message. Only God guides. 25.56, you cannot guide the ones you love. God is the only one who guides in accordance with his will and in accordance with his knowledge of those who deserve the guidance. And then I want to just put this uh, into perspective to get back to this word, great words, greatness of Quran, greatness of the Quran. If we reveal this Quran to a mountain like this, you would see it crumbling, crumbling out of reverence for God. We cite these examples for the people that they may reflect. The key to understand Quran is to believe that it is, uh, it is um, complete, perfect, and fully detailed. If you don't believe that, then we have a problem that we will not able to understand Quran. That's the main criteria. And then 6114, it says, shall I seek other than God as a source of law when he has revealed to you this book fully detailed? Those who receive the scripture recognize that it has been revealed from the Lord truthfully. We shall not harbor any doubt. And then the other thing is the sincerity we should have to understand Quran. 
none can grasp it except the sensitive right that's why what language the computer understand right computer doesn't know anything maybe java or whatever c plus anything right it doesn't know persian arabic or or hindi but computer came up with that miracle because uh that is how god wants us so anyone who is sincere who believes that it is complete perfect and fully detailed they will get the message from the quran and i want to sum up the sequence of events right uh 14 year 100 years back prophet muhammad's soul was taken to high heaven in the month of ramadan on a blessed or blessed okay blessed the <laughs> third night at 27 night right angel gabriel released the quran to prophet muhammad's memory for 23 years and prophet muhammad wrote down the quran in chronological order the committee was formed to document the quran after he died the criteria was set to collect and document the quran was there should be at least at least two witnesses for each verse and then the love of prophet made the scribes to add two false verses the criteria was violated God allowed this to happen for a reason right? and God kept the secret hidden for 1400 years for the future generation God allowed the secret surface even when the input to the computer was wrong profound mathematical miracle came out of the computer the miracle was physical repeatable incontrovertible we can show it to people we can we can count ourselves and everything with it now the what is our responsibility so if you see from 1968 to 1990 that khalifa was working on this miracle and then he brought us um, so many uh, proofs that this is this quran is uh, the uh, quran is the word of god and after 20 years of hard work we have this miracle with us now right and then god says one of the great miracles 74 7435 it says this is one of the great miracles and then when we get the miracles what happens to us it becomes our responsibility right we have we have responsible um, to 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 handle this god know that god knows who to give what right and he chose this generation who are mathematically sophisticated generation to have this great miracle and then god has put a responsibility on us then what is the responsibility i I'm, even i'm trying to understand that but right now at least i know that it's a, it's a great um, responsibility on on us or on for me when i receive this uh, miracle most of the uh, submitter perspective starting uh, years uh, when the messenger was printing he was mostly focusing on on the mathematical miracle and what is our responsibility how will uh, how will people react is based on for this mathematical miracle at least i have seen number 5 to the regular muslims if i go with this mathematical miracle they come up with saying that what did god mean by this allegory this exactly without any um, um without any change in their attitude they they say this i have seen this uh, myself so but are we going to just stop that um going with going with um, with the math miracle every every time when i when i received the message first i was uh, i was striving a lot and then after that slowly um after marriage it stopped no <laughs> so we have to strive because this 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 miracle didn't came just like that it over 1400 years it was hidden and then there is a reason that our generation is the secret is revealed to our generation and i also wanted to make sure that we we understand that god says that if if any blessing we don't appreciate then it is going to be taken away like for example the arabs were no arabs you know not even a single arab is going to uh, come to the path because they not just um, um appreciated they started to fight against that right and then when we get something here and then we don't focus on this one and then focus on um so many other things then we will lose it and we definitely we have to strive and then god says uh, if we strive then god blesses us with happiness right absolutely god's allies are nothing to fear nor will they grieve for them joy and happiness in this world as well as in the hereafter this is god unchangeable law such is the greatest to triumph the guaranteed happiness now and forever anyone who works righteousness male or female while believing will surely grant them a happy life in this world and will surely pay them their full recompense in the day of judgment for the righteous work 16122 we granted him happiness 
in this life and in the hereafter he will be the vaishya so this is the result of striving but how much uh, are we going to strive the god says in 240 it says you to fulfill your part of the covenant that i fulfill my part of the covenant and reverence me and then 2455 my favorite uh, verse is god promises kings and queens on earth god promises those among you who believe and lead a righteous life that you will make uh, them sovereigns on earth as he did for um as he did for those before them and will establish for them the religion he has chosen for them and will substitute peace and security for them in place of fear all this because they worship me alone they never set up any idols beside me those who disbelieve after this are the truly wicked and uh, lastly i wanted to say that if we do what god wants us to do then observing commandments brings uh, prosperity 7163 remind them of the community by the sea who desecrated the sabbath when they observed the sabbath the fish came to them abundantly and when they violated the sabbath the fish did not come we thus afflicted them as a consequence of their transgression so we i hope and pray that we observe the commandments um, be together have some picnics let's pray hakim as salah allah akbar allah akbar allah akbar allah akbar allah akbar لا اله الا الله اكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Allahu Akbar Sami Allah liman hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله اكبر انا رب العالمين سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum Great sermon on the I didn't know about the 133. Uh-huh. Thank you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It was really good. Thank you. Uh-huh. Very, very good. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-huh